help us. God, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. We thank you for your goodness in the hearts and lives of your people. Bless all the churches that are preaching the gospel in the Inland Empire, Riverside, Orange County, all around the world. God, we thank you for them all. And Lord, we ask that you bless them and be with them, God. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Let's open up our Bible real quick to uh, 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 Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Today I'm going to share a message with you that I believe it's important for all of us to have. It's called honor. Everybody say honor. honor. Amen. Oh, we want to give honor where honor is due. So let's say hello to Marlene. Hallelujah. She's hiding in the back. Amen. All oh, you guys love her. Amen. And, uh, and so anyways, we, you know, we're talking about honor today. In, in Romans chapter 13, the Bible talks about honor and honoring those in authority. And so today, uh, as, we, as we hear the word of God, I believe in the house of God, there are two groups of people. There are groups of, two groups of people, not in this church. This church, we only have one group of people. But in most churches, they have two groups of people. They have the, they have the crowd and they have disciples. So there's people that are just the crowd. Jesus fed the crowd, but he had 12 disciples. Amen? And, and so, uh, you know, so look at your neighbor right now and say, are you the crowd or are you a disciple? Look at your other neighbor and say, are you the, oh, 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 you know, actually, if you want to go a little bit deeper in the word, Jesus, God separates the goats from the sheep. So look at your neighbor and say, are you a goat? No, don't do that. Don't do that. That's probably not a good thing to do. I'm, just ask him, just say, are you a sheep? That's it. Don't even say the goat thing. Amen. Especially you wives, don't be looking at your husband and say, are you an old goat? Don't say that, don't say that. Uh, but, but, but it's important to know that in the Bible, it talks about having honor and, and, and knowing where we are. But as a disciple, I don't know about you, but as a disciple of the Lord, I, for the last 30 years of serving God, I wanted to be like God, like, not God, I want to be like Jesus. I wanted to be like Jesus. I wanted to do, how, do and live the way Jesus taught me to live. I wanted to take the Bible and not just read the Bible, I wanted the Bible to read me, amen? and to find things inside of me that to help me become a better me amen and so I that's what I wanted for 30 years God less of me more of you I want people to see Jesus not me not this old mean person not this person that has attitude and weird and trippy things I want them to see Jesus inside of me and, and so God put me through some things to get some things out of me and, and you know that's why we go through trials you know that trials and tribulations aren't there to uh, to to, to show God where you're at is to show you where you're at because you don't know where you're at until you go through something you don't really know where you're at until you actually go through something you can we can act like we're all great and dandy but when we go through a trial we find out what's really on the inside because it's not how we act it's how we react that shows what's really inside because I can be a happy glad fun pastor until I get on the 91 freeway and, and then all of a sudden it's like okay there, there it is there it is right there and you know I, I just want I, I wanted to be like what Jesus called me to be and it's important to know that you know finding out where you really are how do you know how, how will you ever get somewhere if you don't know where you're at now and, and so so I had to figure out where I was God show me me put the light on me so that I know if I'm the problem you know, I, I met a person one time, and they, they told me, oh, I hate my boss. My boss treats me bad. How about your previous boss? Oh, yeah, yeah, that boss treated me bad, too. I hated that boss, too. How about the boss? Oh, yeah, that boss was unfair, too. And I looked at it and I said, maybe they're not the problem. <laughs> and, and, and so today we're going to talk about honor and how, what's important about honor. See, there's two things we all need to understand as disciples. Look at your neighbors. They were disciples. Amen. And, and to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ is to follow Jesus, even things that we don't agree with. See, there's two things that we always have to understand. There's faithful Christians and loyal Christians. A faithful person is a person that says, I'm faithful as long as I agree with you. That's faithfulness. Loyalty is different. Loyalty is saying, I'm following you whether I agree with you or not. See, you can have a faithful friend that, that is with you as long as they agree with you. But as soon as you date that guy they don't like, they're gone. As soon as you do something that irks them the wrong way, 
you're out, they're out of your life. That's a faithful friend. A loyal friend says, you know what? I don't think what you're doing is right. I don't agree with it, but I'm your friend and I'm still with you to the end. Right? Woo, come on. I mean, Jesus is a friend to us. I mean, Jesus is our savior. He's loyal. He's faithful and he's loyal. Even when he doesn't agree with you, he's still with you. He doesn't leave you. Listen to what the Bible says talking about authority. Now, now you're going to have to bear with me today because I'm going to strike some chords that is going to just have a symphony of beautiful music, but it might be like hardcore subwoofer to you. Whoa, it's too much, but it's going to be good. I promise. Okay. Romans chapter 13, Paul's talking to the disciples. So if you're a mature disciple, this is for you. If you're not there yet, don't worry about it. But this is for mature believers. This is meat. Look at your neighbor and say, meat. meat. This is the real deal. This is where the rubber meets the road to find out really where we are in our Christianity. One, one of the areas. This is one of the areas. Romans chapter 13. Let everyone be subject to governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. Ooh, that's gonna, oh, that's gonna burn. Whew. Here we go, here we go. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Even authorities we don't agree with. See, there would be no Joseph without a Pharaoh. And so we need to understand that just because we don't agree with certain people in positions of authority doesn't mean that God didn't put that there on, on purpose for a purpose. And it may not be permanent. It may be a temporary thing just to move things in a certain direction that God needs it to move in order to get us to our final destination. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever, everybody say that with me, rebels, one more time, rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, whether it's permanent or temporary. And those who do so bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong, do you want to be free from the fear of one in authority, then do what is right and you will be commended. See, I don't worry about the highway patrol on the freeway if I'm obeying the speed limit. I drive right, no problem. I'm, you know we all do it, right? As soon as we see a cop, look at the speed limit. Check, our, check where the gauge is, you know? But if you're doing something wrong, it's like, there's a cop behind it. You know, when I was in the, in the world, you know, partying, there's a cop, man. It's like, there's a cop. I hate cops. Why? Because I'm doing something wrong and they might bust me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> cops, that's a bad word. I shouldn't say that. Police officers. And, and you know, in regards to that, police officers and those in, uh, uh, in authority like that, you know, there's, there's always going to be there, people are people. There's going to be good and bad. You know, there's going to be some that aren't fair and some that are. But it's not my place. My place is to obey the word of God. Amen? The word of God says respect those in authority. So I have to, whether I agree with it or not, I have to respect authority. Here we go. Do what is right and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For the ruler does not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on wrongdoers, on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, because, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why we pay taxes.
For the authorities are God's servant who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. <laughs> if revenue, then revenue or money. In, if respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Honor. To honor those in authority. And when a person chooses to be disrespectful to anyone in authority or the office of authority, if I should dare say it, if I'd rather say it that way, the, the office, the seat of authority, God doesn't like that. God will never like that. And the reason he doesn't like that, because it reminds him of an old slew foot named Satan. It was Lucifer who came against authority first. God had established his kingdom. Lucifer was among them. And Lucifer stirred up strife and came against God. And God says, I'm done with this, and threw him out. Then as soon as Adam and Eve were on the planet, and God created the world and everything was happening, the very first temptation that Lucifer used, the Satan used, the devil used, was this. Don't listen to what the old man said. He said, did God say you can't eat of the fruit of all, that you can eat of all the fruit? They said, yes, except the one. He goes, and if we eat it, we'll die. He goes, you won't die. If you eat of that forbidden fruit, he, you'll be like God. So what did he do? He caused Adam and Eve to disrespect authority. God told them not to eat it, even though it didn't make sense. Why can't we have it? Doesn't matter. He said no. No is no. Look at your neighbor and say, no means no. God wants us to be respectful people. That means respectful in front of others, respectful to others, especially those in authority. I've always been a very careful person even when my children were young and maybe they had a school teacher that was, didn't seem to be fair with them. And, and, and I remember in times when they were young, they would come and say, my teacher's unfair, making me do this, blah, 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 blah. I would never jump on the bandwagon with my kids. Even though I agreed with them, I would never disrespect their teacher in front of them because I had to teach them that even though you don't agree with the authority, you still respect the authority. First Peter 2.18, servants, be subject to your masters with respect, not only to the good and gentle bosses, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing. I mean, God for himself sends rain on the just and the unjust. He doesn't say, well, that, 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 that unjust person, I'm not going to give them rain. And so everywhere they go, there's no rain, but everyone else gets rain. It's like, don't go around that person. He doesn't have any rain on him. So if you see a person that's dry, walking around with no rain on them when you're wet, something's wrong with that picture. You know, when it comes to bosses, you know, I, I had a boss that was, yeah, that boss. I had that boss once. That boss was crazy, man. And you know, I would go to work, and everyone in the company, it was a nurse's station with a dialysis unit. Uh, I used to be a dialysis nurse. And, you man, she was. She was like, something wrong with her. I don't know, man. She, she just like, you could, she was unpredictable. You didn't know if it was a good day or a bad day with her. You know, you just walked on tippy toes when you, when you, when you went to see her. It's like, okay, is she going to trip on me or what? You know, you just couldn't. It, it was hard to read her. And all the other nurses would just talk about her and bash her. And you know, and I just chose as a believer to stay away from that. Because it didn't matter if I agreed with her or not, or if I liked her or not. The, 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 uh, just knowing, just the fact that she was in the office of authority, I learned, be quiet. Don't touch that. If it's wrong, God will take care of it but I'm just going to do what I'm supposed to do, what I got hired to do. I wasn't hired to like my boss. I was hired to do my job. 
And so I would go to work, and I'd just be like, man. And they'd be gossiping. Oh, did you hear what so-and-so? It's like, you know what? I'm out of there. I, I'm sorry. That's my boss. I'm not going to do that. Even though you're right. See, you can be 100% right and completely wrong. And so I just prayed. Oh, Lord, get her out of here. No, no. And I, <laughs> because I didn't know what that boss went through at home. I don't know if, if maybe her son didn't come home that night. I didn't know if maybe her and her husband ha, ha, had a conflict going on. I, I didn't know if there was some infidelity in her life or somebody did something to her. I don't know where she came from. And for me to judge her and to look at her as this evil, wicked person when I don't really know her story, I said, oh, Lord, I don't know her. You know what? I, I'm, I have enough issues of my own to worry about. I'll be talking about someone else's. So I just prayed for her. I said, Lord, you know, just bless her. Be with her. You know, fix her. I mean, Lord, just do <laughs> help her. But see, that boss helped me understand where I was. Can I submit to authority when I don't, when I don't agree with it? Can I submit to authority when it doesn't make any sense? Can I say, you know what? It doesn't matter if I like it or not. I'm going to submit to it kind of brings us to our political position. See, one thing I need to make clear with every single one of you, I don't follow elephants or donkeys, I follow lions. But regardless, if I agree or disagree with those in authority, especially the President of the United States, it is not my place as a believer to tear down the office. And anyone, regardless if they're correct or not, anyone who does such a thing is out of the will of God. Because my Bible says that all authority, all authority, even the authority I don't agree with. So I always question myself, or actually when I see things, when I see believers on a rampage tearing down the government tearing down presidents, tearing down. Listen, and they, they, it's been going on forever. Don't think just because the Internet showed up in the 1980s, that's when it all started. It's been going on forever. You just didn't know. But when I hear of true believers questioning and, and posting and, and, and criticizing, you know, yeah, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because it's not our place. Our, our call is to pray for the leaders. And not going to change just because you complain. You're, complaining doesn't change things. I always tell people, well, if you're so upset about it, go and run for president. <laughs> I said, most people don't even care about politics until it affects them. <laughs> King David had this issue. King David's going to teach us something today. Is that all right? He's going to teach us about authority and how to honor authority even when they don't agree with it. See, there was a king named Saul. You can read it for yourself in 1 Samuel. And king Saul was anointed to be king. People wanted a king, God gave him a king. Then King Saul, he decided... When Samuel the prophet came to him and said, King Saul, I don't want, I don't want you to make a sacrifice. You don't, I'll make a sacrifice. He didn't even tell him not to make a sacrifice. He just said, I'll make the sacrifice when I come back. And, and then you guys are going to go to war. Well, King Saul decided, ah, oh, you know, he's taking too long. People are getting a little bit, uh, you know, a little, little uh, nervous. So I'm just going to make the sacrifice. So he just did it. Completely went against Samuel's authority. King Saul was not a priest. He had no authority in that area, but he's going to do it anyways because of the people. So he does it. Samuel shows him and says, what are you doing? So the people made me do it, you know. And, and that's what I always tell leaders that all the time. Be careful, leaders. Don't let people lead you. You lead them. And, and so, so, uh, so Samuel says, you can't do that. Don't do that. That's you, that's, you're coming against the, God's authority. And, and so then he says, now this is what God wants you to do. Go to the Amalekites. And I want you to, God wants you to destroy all the Amalekites. Get rid of them. Get rid of all of them. Don't spare anybody. So King Saul, he's like, ah, the old man doesn't know what he's talking about. He, so he destroys everything, but he keeps the best of the fruit uh, of all the goods. He keeps all the sheep. And then what does he do? He keeps King Agag as a prize you know, uh, um, a prisoner of war. 
Samuel shows up and what are you doing, Saul? And guess what King Saul does? He says, I've done the will of the Lord. He is convinced that he's done the will of the Lord. He goes, I have done the will of the Lord, Samuel. See, I, I know you told me to kill everybody, but you know, I thought it would be better if we just kept the best and we did it this way because if we do it this way, we can offer sacrifices to God. And I'm sure God would like that. But you know, let me tell you something that's so important that King Saul missed is that just because it's good doesn't mean it's God. That, 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 that just because, that, you know, a religious spirit is a trippy spirit. A religious spirit can get on anybody. You know what a religious spirit does? Makes you think you're in the will of God when you're out of the will of God. Religious spirit makes you think you're cold when you're hot when you're really cold. Makes you think you're doing God's will when you're completely out of God's will. But you'll be convinced you're doing God's will. And just because it looks like God doesn't always mean it's God. See, Samuel tried to convince himself that he was doing the will of God. And he came against authority. And then, and then he tried to excuse himself and say, well, you know what? This is the best. But really what he was doing is coming against authority. And, and so God said, that's it. You're not going to be king anymore. And he told Samuel the prophet, that's it. You're not going to be king. And so when Samuel went to go turn, Saul grabbed his garment and tore it off. And Samuel turned on and said, that's how the kingdom is going to be torn from you. Then the next chapter, Samuel the prophet goes and finds David, Jesse's son. Anoints him as king, the next king. Saul doesn't know about this. He only knows that there's going to be a king eventually. But see, even though Samuel said that, Saul was still in that office. Saul still sat in the office of a king. So here's David, anointed new king. What does he do? He's a humble little boy. Doesn't pride around, you know, parade around. Check it out, man. King. Can't touch this. I'm the next king. No, he doesn't say nothing. Just keeps quiet. Then he, then he goes to see his brothers out to battle, and they're ba battling the Philistines. And so David shows up, brings them some cheese, you know, cheese whiz and some crackers. Uh, I don't know. He gave them some food, took them to his brothers. And he looks over, and he sees this Philistine. He's like, what's going on over here? And, and God is so good, man. God is, like, awesome in the way he orchestrates things. You just never know what just might be uh, uh, the, the, the very thing that God uses to get you in the right place, in the right position. So here's this, here's this Goliath, and he's like, who, what's going to happen to the guy who kills this Philistine? And they're like, oh, um, uh, um, uh, King Saul's going to give you his, his daughter. He's like, what? So he goes and tells King Saul, hey, I'm gonna, I, I, can, I, I killed a lion and a bear. I can take out this Philistine. No problem whatsoever. And so he convinces King Saul. I believe it was God who convinced him because what king's going to let a little boy do that? I think God just moved the heart of a king. And that's what he'll do. He'll just move the heart of a king. And so what does King Saul do? Unbeknownst to him, he doesn't know that David's anointed the next king. So what does King Saul do? He takes his tunic off and he puts it on David. Signifying spiritually, he put his mantle on him. And he took his armor off and he put it on David. Signifying in those terms that when a person gives you their armor, you're making covenant with that person now. See, that's what Jonathan did with David as well. Didn't even know he was anointing David as king, giving him his armor, giving him, like when Elijah gave Elisha his, his, gar, his, his, uh, his uh, mantle. And what does David do? David says, I'm not ready for this. I can't fight with this battle. See, sometimes we want certain positions and God's saying, you're not ready for that because you don't know how to handle that position and what it takes to have that position. He goes, I'm not ready for that yet. Takes it off. But didn't mean that the spiritual side, God knew exactly what he was doing. So then David kills Goliath, everything's great, and all of a sudden, that religious spirit jumps on King Saul and King Saul changes on David flips a switch. Next thing you know, King David, the King Saul, wants to kill David. Comes after him, throws a jab, a, 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 a spear at him, a javelin at him, coming against David. And David, the whole time that King Saul's coming against him, never, never, never does he disrespect King Saul. He honors him and respects him. As a matter of fact, there's one time where he's coming after him, trying to kill him. And, and, 
and they're going around a mountain, and, and, and the, 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 the king Saul's army is on one side of the mountain, David and his men are on the other side, and they just keep going around in a circle. <laughs> then King Saul says, hold up, everybody. I got to go to the baño. <laughs> so let's go to the bathroom. So he looks for a cave. He goes into a cave to relieve himself, and David's in the cave. And what does David do? David crouches behind King David, uh, King Saul. He could have killed him. He had every right to kill him. And every legal uh, uh, forum would have said, yes, you were correct. You were, you, you were uh, uh, um, uh, uh, what, what's the word? Justified. Yeah, uh, justified in doing it. But David crouches behind and he cuts the garment off of King Saul while he's going to the bathroom. He could have killed him. All his men kept telling him, man, guys, come on, David, just go kill him. He's right there. He goes, have you no fear? This is God's anointed. Yeah, but he's crazy. This is God's anointed. Yes, but he's he's doing you wrong. This is God's anointed. God said in his word, touch not my anointed. So the next... When David, when Saul comes out, David's standing there with the garment. And what does he do? He doesn't say, hey, check it out. No, 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 no. No. He honors him. He said, I could have killed you, but I didn't. I respect you. I love you. I respect you. I honor you. So what happens later? King Saul's in a battle, a raging battle, and he gets killed. As a matter of fact, he doesn't get killed, he gets wounded. And he goes to his armor bearer, he's with his armor bearer, King Saul's wounded, and he tells his ar- ar- King Saul's armor bearer, the guy who's with him, he says, take your sword and strike me down, lest the Philistines abuse my body and kill me. And the word of God says that the armor bearer feared the Lord, I will not touch you. See, that is why we have to be careful, whether it's in church, pastors, leaders in ministry, bosses, whatever. Be careful. Be careful. Very careful. Even though you may not read, I will say this, you can can always question my motives, but be careful questioning my heart. And so I I, I, want to make sure that we understand that. That David said, no, I'm not going to do that. I have every right to, but I'm not. Joseph never came against Pharaoh. And yet he was blessed through Pharaoh. See, we have to be careful because the very person that you, that a person, not you guys, but that a person might be coming against that leader, that position of authority, may be the very leader that that anoints you to be the next leader. May be the very one that gives you the position and the opportunity. You never know what God might do. Sometimes he just, Jehovah ha ha, the God of humor, he'll trip you out. <laughs> he'll, he'll use the person that you least expect to anoint you and bless you. And you thought, man, I thought that person hated me. And that's the person that opened that door for you and said, you know, I know that. And God will move that. See, it's not coming against him sitting in the, in the, in the, in the workplace uh, uh, lunchroom, gossiping, tearing down the leader. You No, 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 no. We are a believer of the Lord God Almighty. And you pray for your leaders. You ask God to touch them, help them, be with them, Lord, because you don't know what they might be going through. So King Saul drops on his sword and kills himself. So this young guy sees Saul. He grabs the the, 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 the crown and he grabs his armor and he runs to David. And he lays him before David and crouches down before David. He says, and David's like, where are you coming from? I came from the battle. He goes, give me word. What happened? He says, King Saul's dead and and his sons are all dead. And I have come to bring you the crown. He goes, how do you know that? He goes, I was there. And he lies to David. And he tells David, I was there, and King Saul was injured, and he told me to take a sword and kill him, lest he get abused, and I knew he couldn't live, so I killed him, David, and here's your stuff, look, you're the king, here's your crown, here's your, here's your sword, take it, be the king. And the Bible says that David tore his garment, and he cried, and he mourned. He says, do you not have any fear to touch God's anointed? 
How dare you come with my stuff thinking I'm going to give you props and position because you tore down the king. And you're telling me you killed him? Do you have no fear? He says, strike this man down who has no fear to touch. No fear. And I always say to myself, I always have to be careful I've been in positions where my boss treated me bad, and I said, no, I'm not going to go down that road. I prayed for him, and I was blessed through that. Because after I went on vacation, I came back, I walked in my, bo- my, my, my company, and, and I was looking for the boss. I said, Where, where's the boss? They said, oh, they, she got fired. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> so so. And they're transferring this other boss from this other company. And that old boss, that new boss that's coming, happened to be my old boss that we dived together, man. We were best buddies. We were both musicians. I was like, are you kidding? This guy's awesome. So he comes. And I mean, I'm like so happy that my my old boss is now my boss. And we used to dive together. And the only reason I left is because the company, the, 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 the same company, but when I moved to transfer to a new one, it was just closer to my house, like five minutes away instead of an hour away. And, and, but I, but so they brought the boss over. I'm like, hey, man, we're doing this good. And guess what? The same people that complained about the old boss complained about the new boss. I'm like, what gives? You guys are never happy. See, some people are just never happy. It doesn't matter who's doing what. That's why we always have to be careful not to get on the bandwagon with people, not to jump on social media and tear down leaders and authority, government, presidents. It doesn't matter. Even if you don't agree with them, you respect the office enough to say, as a believer, it's not my place. I'm called to pray for them, not tear them down. And that ought to bring a deep conviction that these people that are in authority, whether we agree with them or not, whether they're right or not, whether King Saul was a good king or a bad king, whether he was a crazy king and did crazy stuff and tried to kill David, David said, I will not touch God's anointed. I will not touch those in in authority. And as believers, we need to understand that. All we're doing is tearing down a nation when we should be united as a nation. And say, you know what, I don't always agree with every single government or president. I don't always agree, but it's not my place to say anything, to say anything negative and tear down. My, my, my job as a believer is to pray for them, to pray for those that are in, the, in authority. And the same thing happens in church as well. You may have a leader in ministry that you don't agree with, but if you are complaining, backbiting, whispering, be fearful. Because God doesn't like that. It's not God. Even if you're 100% right, you are completely wrong. See, I learned this a long time with the young disciples. If I'm complaining to someone in the same level as me, it's not complaining, it's gossip, whispering backbiting. See, complaints go up. They don't go this way. If it goes this way, it's gossip. And you know how the the best way Christians get away with gossip? They use one word. I'm concerned. I had this guy tell me one time that that his pastor was not, uh, his guy was complaining about his pastor. And so the guy, it was Chuck Smith. So Chuck Smith was his pastor, and this guy was just complaining about Chuck Smith. Oh, that Chuck Smith. I don't understand why they don't do this. And, you know, I always say this. Listen, no negative comments without a positive solution. If you don't like how things are done, have a positive solution. If all, you, if all a person is going to do is complain, that's just gossip. That's just being a complainer. So I always, when I was in children's ministry, I would tell all my team leaders, no negative comments without a positive solution. So before you make a negative comment, have a positive solution. Well, I don't know what to do. Then be quiet. (laughs) And don't go whispering with someone else. Tearing down leadership. Man, that happened to me. I had a boss. I had a pastor one time. He told me all I did was go to church, sit down and tie my shoe. He walked in and he he just walked in. I, I I just got in the building. I sit down and tie my shoe and Pastor walks and he goes, hey, can't you tell it's hot? Why don't you turn the air on? 
See, in this generation of Christianity, we would have been, I'm offended, I'm leaving the church, and I'm going to go and put a review of that pastor. <laughs> never, never, ever, 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 ever do anything that tears down the house of God, even if you don't agree. There's no, listen, anyone that posts something or puts a YouTube video that tears down other pastors, other churches, other believers in any way, whether they're right or wrong, that's the work of the devil. Don't be a part of that. You may not agree theologically. Paul said this in his word. Paul says these words. He says, whether it's in pretense or in truth, whether it's in false motives or in truth, that the gospel is preached. That's what matters, period. And if I don't agree with that preacher, I don't agree with that church, I don't agree with what they're doing, it's not my place. Because if I go on social media, YouTube, and I start putting all this stuff, I, all it's making the world think is that we're all dummies and we don't know nothing and we're all out, out of control. It doesn't win people to Jesus. It just pushes unbelievers further away. And anyone that does that publicly, that is not of God. And you cannot convince me as God. Even if they're completely wrong, even if their theology is, it's not my place. My place is to build the kingdom only. To build and disciple. I had a person one come up to me one time. They said, oh, you shouldn't be talking about this one preacher. He did da 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 I looked at him. I said, what are you doing for the kingdom? Whoa, I came to warn churches. I said, there's no gift in the Bible that says spiritual watchdog. <laughs> some are called to be pastors, evangelists, and some are called to fix the church. There is, listen, the Holy Spirit will take care of his own church. He doesn't need our help. If it's not God, he'll shut it down. That's what they told the disciples. That's what the Pharisees said. They all got together. They said, we should shut it down. And they all gathered together, the Pharisees. And one of them stood up and said, hold on, guys. He said, wait. We, may, we, we don't know if this is of God or not. And so we need to be careful. Let's just leave it alone. If it's of God, if it's not of God, it'll come to naught. If it is of God, who can stop it? He said, leave it alone. Leave the disciples alone. Paul the apostle came against the Christian church, told them they were wrong. He murdered them. He killed them. And on his way to Damascus, a light shines. And it says, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? Oh, I'm doing the will of God. He says, why are you kicking the goads? Goads are the sharp edges of, a, of, a, of these long sticks, and you're sticking yourself. Every time you kick it, thinking you're going forward, you're just sticking yourself some more. He says, you have no idea. So I believe it's all with all my heart that as true, mature believers, that we understand that there are people in authority, and it's not our place as believers to ever tear down, criticize, cut down, those that God has put in leadership and to follow anyone or get under anyone or give ear to anything that is tearing down those things is terror, it's seed of discord. And so the word of God says to us, it says, do not touch my anointed one and do my prophets no harm. The word of God says these six things the Lord hates and seven are an abomination, a proud look a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift to running to the devil and running to the evil. Excuse me. Yeah, the devil. <laughs> I said that right. Amen. <laughs> a false witness who speaks lies and those who sow discord among brethren, among the church. I believe this is a special message from us, for us. To know that we are believers of the most high God. And it's our call to always be either quiet and let God be God and take care of it and just honor God. Listen, I've got enough issues of my own to be worrying about someone else's issue. I mean, I could, you know, someone said, well, what, what about this and what about that person? Well, let's listen to some of your old preaching tapes. 
And when it comes to the President of the United States, whoever it is, if we don't agree, be quiet. just be quiet. Just be silent. Even a fool is considered wise when he keeps his mouth closed and just stays silent in those places. Come on. That's truth. I had about four people after church last service. I've been so convicted. I, get on. I used to listen to this radio show that would always tear down the government. And when God gave me this conviction, said, be quiet. You're not called to do that. Not called to fix everything. Jesus said, go. And did you know? Real quick, real quick. I'm finished. I'm done. Did you know that nowhere in the New Testament book of Acts do you ever hear the disciples talking about the government? They were too busy winning people to Jesus. They didn't have time for any of that. Woo, come on. If you got something for Jesus, let's give him a praise. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. If you're here today, you don't know Jesus. I'm going to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus. Say this with me with all your heart. Say, Jesus, forgive me of all my sin. I believe you died on the cross. You rose from the dead to give me a new life. And I accept you now as my Lord and Savior. I repent of all my sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give him a praise. Pastor Phillips will walk you through the rest. I'll see you at the front door. All right, let's stand up to our feet, everyone. Did you guys get, some, get something from Jesus this morning? Yeah. Amen, amen. We can all stand up on our feet. Thank you. All right. Well, Lord, I pray a blessing over each and every person here in this place. Lord, I pray that you'll bless them coming, you'll bless them going. And everything that they touch will prosper. And with the great big shout we say about Riverside, Riverside is saved. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Food distribution is located right across the street.